Good afternoon. It is a Friday. Friday. Yay. I'm hoping you're having a fantastic week so far. If you're watching this part of the video, you're watching a replay of an hour segment that we're going to be putting out there, um, the Ask and Prosper show. So people are going to be jumping on and they're going to be asking me questions, um, you know, regarding how to be profitable in their business. And today we're talking about cash flow and how to actually increase your, um, you know, your uh, profit within a business or how to actually make some money. That's the whole um, sort of theme of what I want to be talking about today. And I see Luke Moroni is in the house. Today, this show is, a, is kind of different, my man. Um, prepare your questions. If you've got any questions regarding how to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable, I'm not going to be dishing out that much content, but I will be answering questions if you've got a sum right there. I saw you speaking to your dad yesterday. I'm probably going to be doing that at the end of the year. So we should compare notes and see how it all works out. I see Chris Agar is in the house. You are on the right show, the Ask and Prosper show, where we're basically going to be answering your questions. If you've got anything that um, you want to know regarding a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I see LA Williams is in the house. What's up, my brother? How you doing, my man? Hope you're having a fantastic week so far. I'm just enjoying life. Waiting for your questions as they come through. And um, also just want you to understand that I viscerally believe that if you're running, um, you know, a, 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 you know an, an online business, it has to be profitable and enjoyable. You know, I see Mark Murray is in the house. What's happening, my man? Uh, L.A. Williams, what's up, brother? Tell me, what's 2018 looking like for you there, man? Talk to me. Talk to me. Um I can't wait to see what you're creating right there. So um, while other people are getting ready with their questions and all the stuff, I, I literally help people create a four-step system within their business that helps them find the right kind of person with the, and, put, and dis, dis, distribute the right kind of content, then convert those people and also connect with that audience so that you can be doing have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I see Sunny Das is in the house. What's going on? Tell me, what's your question for me today? I'm so excited. I don't know. Can you tell? Can you tell? I'm really happy. First of all, it's Friday. Second of all, it's been a really good week here uh, at Live Long Digital. We managed to sign on two clients. Um, congratulations to the team. It's a, it's a big deal, you know what I mean? Coming from where I've been in life, coming from um, how I started, you know. That was seven years ago when I came to Australia when I had nobody that I knew and I had um, you know, all this baggage that I had around, um, you know, my skin color, around, you know, thinking that nobody was going to buy from me, um, you know, all of that. I've had to work through that and also increasing, um, you know, the business that comes into into our, our, our um, you know, our company, our agency and helping other people uh, be, do and have a business that's also profitable and enjoyable. And I keep talking about being profitable and I keep talking about enjoying working in, in your business. I would like to ask you a question right now before you start asking me questions. How many times has cash flow, you know, stopped you from um, expanding in your business? How many times has cash flow sort of, um, you know, stopped you from buying a software that could have helped you make your job easier? You know, I know that a lot of people have that going on because in as much as Gary V and all the other people talk about content is king within a business cash is king if you don't have cash to pay for the software's monthly if you don't have cash to pay for um, equipment for you to use if you don't have cash to be do and have um, you know a, a happier existence it's going to be difficult for you i see Taurai Chikara is in the house my man thank you so much for tuning in uh, Luke says it will always be I got thousands of ideas. All right. So let's walk through those ideas then and then, you know, help other people there. Look, um, because I'm going to be talking about maybe studying an Uber. I'm going to be talking about studying a blog. I'm going to be talking about answering questions or doing surveys in the meantime while your main gig is actually working. So look, if you're going to stick around, you can probably help me with some of the ideas that you have because 
At the end of the day, we always talk about being profitable and enjoying the business, but the ability to actually generate positive cash flow is what makes people, um, you know, you know, people relax. You know what I mean? Because if you don't have money coming in, there's always going to be a problem. Your family, there's always going to be something that needs to be fixed. Because one thing that I've realized about a business is business expenses are 10 times more than personal expenses. Do you know what I mean? When somebody wants to offer you a service, they're going to charge you the amount that you pay rent in your house. And then you start comparing, oh my God, is this worth it? Or am, am I actually going to be able to afford, um, you know, these services? So the first thing that I really want you to do when it comes to money and sales and being, um, you know, a, a proper business person is to actually know the distinction that whatever you're going to be charging for your services or whatever somebody is charging you for their services, that's literally or oh, that's practically justifiable because business expenses are totally different to household expenses. Right now, you might be having a monthly budget of $80 as your groceries and then somebody asks you to pay maybe $120 a month and you start thinking to yourself, oh, wait a minute. So does this mean that this service is much more important than me eating every single month? So as small businesses, this is the kind of you know predicament that we go through every single day and eventually we stop ourselves from you know reaching out to an audience that's you know that that can you know help us get more money or we are even afraid to charge what we can for our services because like i said earlier on cash is king how many of you guys are having a cash flow pl problem right now i know some people won't be confident enough or won't you know want to talk about it but this is an open area guys i'm also going through some cash crises in as much as we Picked up a property in the last year and now I've got mortgages that need to be sorted out. So that's the reason why I got to continuously work and, and put money together. And that's the reason why these days I've been dwelling around sales and around cash flow just so that I also have my mindset in the right way. And thank you so much, Chris. I know it takes a lot of guts. Um, you know, to go out in the open and, and really, um, you know, confess that you might be going through these problems. I'm not saying I'm here to give you, I, I mean, um, you know, a, 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 an easier way to whatever cash crisis you might be going through. But I know that within your business, the ability to actually generate some sort of ca positive cash flow year in and year out or month in or month out is really essential for your business to be viable in the long term. Because if you can't be getting money from your customers, <coughs> excuse me, if you can't be getting money from the work that you're putting out there, you get disheartened. You don't have the confidence enough to show up in the public face every single day because you feel like you're an imposter. Do you know what I mean? So half of the time, maybe you might be getting enough to just get you over to the next month. So that means you're leaving paycheck to paycheck um, if, 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 if you are actually managing to do that. So you should be actually having certain systems behind the scenes that will actually, um, you know, alleviate you so that you continuously be productive with your work and you're not pushed behind by lack of resources, by not being resourceful. All right. <coughs> and um, Chris, Chris says mindset and feeling good is crucial. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I think I'm having a bit of a... <coughs> mm. Ah, it's my mindset. You know, it's talking about money and it's trying to jeopardize everything that I'm used to. Ah, don't do that to me. <laughs> Great. So it's impossible to successfully grow a business unless you, you're being profitable, unless it's generating a surplus amount of cash that, you know, every single day, you know, you're actually reaping the benefits of what you're putting out there, you know, and you need to have not this cough. You need to have a sustainable um, basis of, you know, getting the cash. So right now, <clears throat> I want you to type in the comments there. Just let me know how do you, how many sort of sources of income are coming through into your business right now so that you at least subsidize for when your main gig is, is, is going to start hatching. Just type in there. I've got about four different sources and I will mention them right now. First of all, <clears throat> it's my 
services, which is the the SEO, the AdWords, the Facebook marketing, and um, everything else that's working within my business. And then the second one um, is the Australian Business Online Directory, where I'm getting a lot of um, other Australian businesses to huddle together so that the marketing becomes cheap. And then the third one is containers that we've picked up. I'm not going to mention that. And then the other one is properties, all right? So there <clears throat> is always, there has to be always some sort of, influx of um you know cash flow that comes into your business look says three to five which is sustainable which is really good because what if your main hustle is not pulling in um you know the the, the money or maybe your main hustle is not in season at that particular time of the year you should be always having things that bring in um you know the cash and sunny can you tell me what to um, you know, um, sources of income you have right now that, um, you know, you, your, your business actually depends on. Um, <clears throat> and Luke says personal sources of income 10 to 15. Wow. All right. I know who's going to be paying for drinks the moment I meet you, uh, you know, in, in, in Sydney there. Drinks are new, my man. So for some people, whether you're living paycheck to paycheck, you know what I mean? You, you must have some in the reserve tank. I've got a three-year-old. You know what I mean? A three, three-year-old little girl. Every one of you guys has probably seen her. What if, if I didn't have anything going on for me? Um, what if she wakes up and she's sick and and automatically there needs to be some hospital fees and all of those things that need to be, um, you know, looked after and 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 taken good care of. So as a parent, those are the things that worry me day in and day out. And so that's the reason why I gotta work. You know. So if you are running a business. You are human. Do you know what I mean? There's going to be things that will come in your way that will take your attention because you got to be focused. I'm not going to lie to you that this is an easy hurdle to, to, to run your own business because every single day you wake up, you're facing the world. It's like going to battle. And if your mindset is not in tune with who you are as a person and what you're going to be serving and how you're going to be serving those people, you're going to be knocked down every moment you try and stand up. And if your wallet is not strong for you to stand on, then people are going to be trampling on you. So if you don't have reserve in the tank, it's going to be difficult for you to bootstrap your business, for you to actually even go out and network with other people because you're going to need to buy a coffee. You're going to need to get there to that, um, you know, particular, um, particular, you know, meetup place. There's money involved, the clothes that you wear, because people, no matter what you do, they're going to judge you by the way you present yourself. So if you haven't got any sort of sources of income, it's going to jeopardize your very own confidence. And once your confidence is not standing up within yourself, then that's grand opening, grand closing for your business. All right. And I see Sunny does graphic designing and Uber. Hey, we should talk about the graphic design because I always have a few people that want, um, you know, certain pieces done for them. So we should have a chat as soon as we as, as, as maybe as soon as you're ready okay so so to speak you you're likely always looking for ways to increase your income you know what that does then it makes you appear very um desperate to your audience it makes you appear um unorganized and nobody wants to do business with somebody who doesn't look unorganized you know, so the, the lack of money then now starts creating all the evil and then you start resenting your work. You start resenting everything else around you. So it is something you really got to work with within yourself. And I think that's the reason why I'm talking about it a lot, because I was in a comfort zone. You know what I mean? I was enjoying where I was. I mean, coming from Africa, having two pens on my desk, you know, meant that I was rich. Having, you know, all this equipment and everything else working for me, it meant that I was rich. But little did I know that the higher you went, you know, the, the bigger the problems, um, you know, that, that came along with it. And then my little voice inside my head started pulling me back, telling me, hey, listen, do you actually remember you, that African kid, you know, that used to live on a dollar a day? Who do you think you are? So can you imagine having to battle that after having worked so hard? And not, and then sabotaging myself and, and, and not figuring out how am I going to pay my next bills? How am I going to get the next dollar? 
So I then really had to work really hard on myself, for myself, in order for me to be doing and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I know it's not going to be easy for a whole lot of us. We've got bills to pay. We've got mortgages to pay. We've got car notes to look after. We probably have families that we're looking after, etc., etc. Then how then would you just wait for your business up until it's ready to um, you know, offer you the, the profit that you think it was going to offer you. So that's the reason why maybe today we're going to be talking about some of the things that you can do behind the scenes, you know, in order for you to, um, you know, sustain your business um, while you're waiting for it to mature. Because I don't want to lie to you. It takes three to five years for a business to actually start being established. People are looking at what you're doing right now if you're in year one, year two, year three, and they're just going to wait and see how far you're going to go because they don't want to put their money, their resources or whatever they've worked on into somebody who's just going to be a one-click wonder. So in between this time, that doesn't mean you have to wait until five years. You have to consistently show up. You have to consistently prove that you can do this job, earning, learning, and learning is not cheap. You know what I mean? Learning all of these things is not cheap. Buying books is not cheap. Buying courses is not cheap. How then do you sustain yourself in between all of this in order for you to then be that person four years later who's got a business that's profitable and enjoyable? Because that's why a lot of businesses fail. Because they haven't thought of ways of, you know, doing the money thing Besides what they are actually doing, you know, and you see where the problem is cash flow cash is king So how can you earn more money without having to spend? Um, you know extra hours of the day trying to figure out how it actually works, you know, you see now, you know, I've seen Some of the so-called gurus on the internet. I hang out with some of them some of them steal my stuff and then try and You know rip you guys off on the internet. I can see it but they all cheerlead, you know, their latest offers. They all cheerlead their latest new and improved shiny objects. At the end of the day, these are things that they have also learned from somebody else. And guess what happens when, um, you know, they, they, they try and, and, and sell those things. You're going to need to run a webinar. You're going to need to run maybe clickety, clickety, clack funnels. You're probably going to need to operate a website. You're probably going to need to have a sales funnel. And you're probably going to need to have all of these things, um, you know, the time, the energy, the wherewithal to actually present that work to people. You know, and then after that, they're going to present different ways that you also can make money while they're making money off of you and how you can do it fast. If somebody starts telling you you can make money fast, run, run, run for your life because there's no overnight success. But does it usually work? Some of the things work, some don't, but you've got to work, put in the grit. It takes 21 years to be 21 years old. All right. So how are you going to be, you know, fulfilling your monetary desires and needs both for your family or for your business or whatever needs that you might have that that are imminent within your, your, your own survival and your own psyche? Because if you're broke, you can't do well if you don't feel well. If you're broke, if you're tired, if you're sick, you can't operate. You know, so you, you, you would have a list you know, you'd have a list of problems that are just emanating from the fact that nobody knows you yet. And that is okay. All right. But you got to go out there, knock on every door, knock on every, you know, lead and make sure they understand that you're here to stay. That's all they need to know. Are you here to stay? But that takes time and that time takes effort and money, the money, which most of us don't have. You know, so some of the things that are sold online, yes, they work, but do we have the money to pay for them? Most of the times we don't. So sure, if you have created a list, you've got a following, they have a good understanding about how you can help them. Otherwise that would then work, but it would take a whole lot of time. You know, Chris, did I bore you to sleep today? <laughs> Ah, great stuff. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in, you know? So it's hard really to to actually persist when you're struggling financially, you know? But what other options do you have? 
at the end of the day, you know, this comes down to what you focus your thoughts on. Yes, you know, I'm a firm believer of the law of attraction. I've got books around it and all that stuff and, and how being abundant and being positive will help you through. But that doesn't put money in your pocket. You know, it's not enough to in help you increase your income. You know, maybe this year or the next month or the next week for that matter. Because if you are operating softwares online, you would know that every single month they're going to need their $10, their $40, their $50, and it all adds up, you know? So if you combine a bit of positive thinking and a bit of action, well, you might have a chance. But right now, if you're not really doing stuff that would then generate that income, you'll be going nowhere real fast, you know? So you have to take a lot of action. And some of the things you'd have to do, some jobs that would help you get by. And Sunny says, it's been a couple of months since I started doing graphic design, but due to money crisis, I have to drive Uber. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, at the end of the day, I mean, you're only just starting, man. A couple of months, you only just started in 2018. Well, welcome to the entrepreneurial world. You're going to need to stay in a little bit longer. For people to actually start knowing who you are, have a track record. So yeah, you're right about driving Uber right there. You know, <sighs> you know, it's 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 one of the the easiest thing because it's a no brainer. Because if you've got a help, if you've got a a, a a car and a clean driving record, and you know you can drive Uber or some of the other you know share car type things, because payments come in quickly. I did it before myself. You know, and you can choose your own schedule so you can work around your business while you still have that instant, um, you know, cash flow coming in. You're going to have to do these jobs in order for you to, um, you know, have something going around because just really looking at your business in and of itself, it might really, really, really not work out for you. So it's as simple as just downloading the app. I'm not... I'm not, um, you know, advertising for Uber here, but I'm just, it's a simple app to sign up. And then, and then you just need to set yourself apart by having a good uh, track record. And, you know, I think with Uber, provide refreshments and, 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 and some sort of a unique service, you know? And oftentimes people won't head out with a driver who's got a low score. So you want to make sure that you're also not jeopardizing your, your chances there with Uber there, you know? I know personally, I cancel ride shares uh, for drivers who've got a, a, a lower score than four. You know, you never know who it is because it's, it's the members of a public at the end of the day, you know. So that's that's pretty cool. Another thing that you could do is when you're sitting around there, find out something that you've just learned and try and teach it to other people, either in a course or you can try and teach it to other people over, over Skype or whichever way. And then charge people so that they can they can pay you for your services. You know, that could be, it won't be much, but at least you get known for something and you can do that and help other people um, that are a little bit, you know, lower than you are right now. You know, and um, <clears throat> I put up a, a, a post another time about selling things on the marketplace on Facebook. You know, you can buy stuff off of eBay and then sell it on Facebook and yeah, make money that way. My wife does a, a fair bit of that. She buys some of the stuff uh, from other, you know, cheaper websites and sells it on on um, on the marketplace there. So if you if you want to know the tricks about the marketplace, type in marketplace. I'll send you a link that I wrote about, you know, some of the activities that other people are doing to generate more cash, um, you know, for for themselves there. You know, you know, I probably don't need to tell you where you you can you can buy these items or where you can sell them. But obviously, you can also use Amazon to do that. You know, you, you can sell your old books and um, any other used goods that people can actually utilize. In Australia, Amazon is now open for business. So you can actually have a look at that and see how you can, um, you know, be do and have some sort of side income that would help you, um, you know, work out there. And Fano Mponda, how's it going, man? Sorry, we've been so busy lately, but now you see what I'm doing. Huh? <laughs> Correct, mate. Uh, being an entrepreneur isn't an easy task. Absolutely. You know, it takes 21 years to be 21 years old. So some people think, you know, you're just coming in from corporate and 
um, you know, the, the, the clients that you had from corporate are just going to transition and, and, and work with you. Yes, they might. But guess what happens, my man? Guess what happens, sister? What happens is these people were buying from you while you were in corporate because of the brand you were working for. Now you are your own personal brand. It takes a lot of money for you to be known in the marketplace. So this is exactly what you need to start doing and working towards and be seen that you can actually help by actually helping people so that people would formulate around you, you create your tribe, and then you can now be able to sell to them. So all of these things need money. So all those people that would tell you, you're going to start making money online with no money down. Run away from those things because it is never going to happen. And I know some of you people have been burnt. You've probably seen it happening. And that's the reason why your businesses are not working. You know, Luke says it's an enjoyable task being an entrepreneur, a challenging task, fulfilling task. I think if you really want to see the expanse of humankind and you do it on the cheap, be an entrepreneur because you get to learn. You get to meet people, you get to travel, you get to do all these sorts of things and you get to expand your brain. And as much as the person who is not waking up doing something they absolutely love experiences, you know, you're being an entrepreneur every single day is like climbing Kilimanjaro up and down every single day because you never know what to expect. Clients might come in with a different story. Investors might come in with a different story. The market might just change totally just like that. Look at what Kodak and Nokia happened to them. You know, maybe they would have invested millions and millions in such a, um, what do you call it? In such a, uh, you know, line of business. And then eventually it was grand opening, grand closing because technology changed. You know, so before you start running out of you know, pieces of technology that you don't need, sell them online, you know, and then you can get a bit of money back so that you can continuously, you know, support your dream because nobody's going to come and knock on your house's door and say, hey, look, hey, funnel, hey, Sunny, we're ready for you now, you know, do you know what I mean? So if you've got a product and you really know that somebody needs to, to buy it off of you, try and conduct like a webinar. Get people to know what you're selling. Get known. You know what I mean? And, and, and webinars or live videos like this, they're a great way of increasing income quickly. <laughs> I can speak from an um, example, you know, because when I started doing these live videos, that was a year ago, not a lot of people knew me. But now I have people, you know, tripping, stumbling and falling, trying to know what else I can help them with. And eventually I've got systems set up that I can build them with. So if you really want to, if you now know something about what it is that you're doing, try and teach it to other people so that you can solidify your authority and then people can actually know that you know what you're talking about. And hello, Charlie O'Shea, my man, how are you going? You know, how's it going, my man? So if you can actually get an audience, because if you don't have money within a business, you've got time. So if you've got no resources, try and be resourceful with what you have. And if you can get an audience around yourself, a webinar, a live, or in a Facebook group, you know, and then they can follow, and you follow a perfect webinar script, or if you can, you know, follow some sort of conversation that people can understand, you can then, you know, try and sell your products that way. Because right now, though, if you watched yesterday's video, a lot of people are not making money, not because their product is shit, but they're just not selling. They're just not selling or putting themselves out there to so try and figure out how can you actually reach out to your audience and start making that money. Because you know what? At the end of the day, people only look at results. They're not going to look at the time that you put into creating the best website or whatever it is. How are you going to help them? What's in it for them? So the only way you can showcase what it, what's in it for them, cheaper, better, faster, is through a live feed like this or a Zoom or a, um, a webinar. You know, that, that would get you some really fast cash. And webinars are a great way, way to sell high ticket, um, you know, digital products where people can instantly get access to the, to the products there and there. Maybe you can teach, you, send, you know, you can sell your coaching or some sort of membership based uh, software that you might have. 
All of those things. Because if you don't have cash flow month in, month out, you're going to start hitting walls. And the more walls you hit, it, it, it cripples your confidence. And the more confidence you lose, you can't stand in front of people. You know? And talking about webinars and stuff like that, how many of you guys have a properly built sales funnel? Can you just type in the number one if you actually have a properly built sales funnel? Type in the number two if you're thinking about it. Type in the number three if you would like help building a sales funnel. So number one, you already have it. It's well oiled. It's making money for you. Number two, you're thinking about it. Number three, you want help creating one. So, so then we would actually know how are you actually being doing and having I see Steve. Steve Brossman is in the house. How are you doing, my man? Thank you so much for tuning in, brother. And I see Reggie. Reg Harris is in too. How are you? Sunny Dash, I will be in touch with you as soon as we finish this. And Fano Mponda, Mirachanyato Sasa, boys, obvious. I, I've seen some of the stuff that you're putting out there. Now, Esther Foots, Esther, Esther Tofon Rotaura, Tona Zahamira say, thank you so much for tuning in. It's like a Friday, you know? Because sales funnels, they, they meticulously are crafted to be automated selling engines. They're your ATM. When you're not there right now, I've got a couple of sales funnels where I just send people a link and then if, if they convert, they convert. If they don't, then at least they are being pixeled and, and, and then I can then retarget them whichever way, you know? So you can just sell anything through a sales funnel, you know? Because then, have you ever noticed how you go to a shop? <laughs> I was laughing the other day. I don't know if you guys noticed. I went to uh, Woolworths. And um, everybody around me was asking for help with those, um, you know, self-service, um, you know, machines. And I went there, I went in, ta -da 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 -da, and I did it, bought my, my goods. And then, um, yeah, I walked out as if everything was normal, you know. But that's, that's their sales funnel right there. You know, there's a lot of people that are walking around, you know, the internet shopping mall. And when they come across your website, do you have a well-oiled sales system that would just sell them something so that they can get to understand what it is that you can help them with. Now, Lisa, Lisa, how are you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in, by the way. Lisa says, it's great to be here listening to you live today. Thank you for sharing your valuable knowledge. Number three, most appreciatively um, and gratitude. You are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for the energy that you bring to the show as well. It really makes me proud to know that you know, respectable people like yourself are also sitting in the audience. That then just makes me want to make sure that this show is as valuable as it can be. So thank you so much. All right. So the thing about um, a sales funnel is you can sell just about anything, whatever product you're selling right now. So those people that are selling, can you type in what product you're selling? Um, just one product. Just type it in there so that I can tell you how you can actually modify your sales funnel in as much as you get it, you know, you know, the funnel of, you know, when you're transferring liquid from a high pressure, you know, container to a smaller pressure container, you want to narrow it down like this because everybody else who's right at the top is not your customer. Some people are just speculating. Some people are just trying to figure out, are they, um, you know, are they the right kind of person to be working with you? So the more you get to them to know you, that's where you start doing the ACDC concept. A for them being aware of who you are, see consideration stage where they're considering whether to work with you or not. D, they are actually making a decision to make a purchase with you and then C, um, C then becomes the conversion. They are actually giving you the cash. And I see Luke Corin as in sports editing. I like how you've niched it down, my man, because back in the time you were just, oh, I do Photoshop. Yeah, you know, everybody else with Canva or an app can do what you were doing. But now that you've narrowed it down, you've got the results. And I like how you designed. Can you tell me, did you design that girl's um, shoes? That, that was something remarkable. I saw that. I forgot to congratulate you on that. All right. So once you have all of those things going on in your, you know, your sales funnel, um, it, 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 it makes it a whole lot easier for you. People now know and they can now trust that, yes, they can uh, buy from you. And sometimes you've got upsells and sometimes you've got one-time offers within that sales funnel, etc. you know? 
So if you're looking for conversion optimization, you really need to have one of those back end things. Um, I don't know if you can see what mine looks like um, here. I'll just quickly show you. It goes like this, like that, and then it tells, it tells people what it is that I do. And then I've got what is called a value ladder. A value ladder literally talks about, you know, if somebody starts off, um, you know, with the blueprint, that's the first value I give them. And then they jump on to the next product, which I have, which is probably, um, you know, a, 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 um, the, um, the airboard listing. And then up, up on top of that is probably a consultation with me, you know, give value as long as they keep coming to you, you know. And uh, Luke Corin says, yeah, design her Nike boots for Commonwealth Games. Congratulations, my man. Uh, that is that is something you should be putting on your website as social proof. Because that also would help you get ka coming your way, you know. So at the end of the day, you know, some people are not ready to buy today. Some people might want to buy a little bit later on. Some people are just, you know, they just don't trust you yet. So with, um, you know, your, your sales funnel, you can do upsells. Some people don't have the money to purchase, you know, your ultimate product. Because guess what happens? When somebody comes into our way, I'm tying my shoelaces as we talk. Because <laughs> uh, I might just start running. Um, you know, when, when, when people come to you, half of the time we give them our most expensive product. You know, because we don't have money to, you know, because we want money real quick. You know, so, so sometimes that is too expensive for our audience. But if you give them, you know, a strata that they can climb while they're purchasing your goods, you will be getting money in the process and also increasing your cash flow. Because let's say right now I've got a product that, that sells on the market for like 6500 And if I start you off with that 6500 are you not just going to walk away? You probably would. But if I start you off with a product that is, is starting at $0 and then from there maybe $20 and then, you know, you then decide, do you continuously want to work with me or not? You know, depending on the value that I'm putting out there. I see Amanda Holmes has just tuned in. How are you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in, my love. Hope you had a fantastic week. Yeah, bo. Great stuff. So you, you can do upsells. You can do one-time offers. Um, you know, and, and if you're looking to really optimize your conversions, just ensure that you're making a profit for every dollar that is spent bringing in your audience. Right now, can I ask you a question? Do you know how much it costs you to get a, um, do you know how much it costs you to get a, uh, to, to get a lead? Can you type in the comments there? Can you tell me how much it actually costs you to get a lead? If you know that uh, price, can you just type it in there, right there? Anthony Murphy, thank you so much, man, for tuning in. And thank you so much for um, creating your profile on the online uh, online business, online, Australian business online directory. <laughs> and Meet Lee, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So for those that are tuning in, we're just really talking about ways that you can increase cash within your business because without cash, because cash is king, you know, without cash flow, it's grand opening, grand closing for your business. And we're just talking about ways that you can increase, you know, the, the, the value of your client. You can increase, you know, the, the value spend of your client because once somebody has already purchased from you or given you money, it's an easier transaction, you know, trying to sell them something else and they already trust you. You know, you're already maybe holding their credit card details. So it's an easier way to um, work through it. Now, Luke says, what do you think about Buttercard? Um, Buttercard is okay. And also, I'm going to speak this with all due respect. Um, Buttercard is a brand um, that is also helping other people. So I'm not qualified to speak anything, but I'm going to speak from my own um, experience. I did Buttercard once about four years ago when I was doing iPhone apps. Um, and, um, it was okay, but then you do then find that sometimes you might have, um, you know, services that need cash, you know, like, um, you know, you might be doing a, a funnel for a client and you need to be paying monthly fees. So if you don't need monthly fees, um, for your services, it will be okay. Um, but most of the clientele that's on that platform is already used to not paying for services. So, um, if you can benefit from some of the other services that the other, um, you know, audience provides, then that should work for you. I can't speak um, on their business model. I can't speak 
because I'm also a competitor within that space, so and I'm I'm not rich enough to be sued by them as yet. So I could talk I could talk to you about that in, in private, and then I'll let you know my my actual feelings about that. And Anthony, thank you so much for that. Um, one other thing that I've also noticed, um, and and if there's any other questions, guys, let me know because so far. This show really has to be about you guys asking me questions, but I just went on a tangy end and, um, you know, really got really excited talking about these things. Um, one of the ways you can actually make money is doing social media for other businesses. Um, some of the people that are on watching this show right now, you were brought up when social media was a thing. Some of us are dinosaurs that were brought up where, you know, you had the one telephone in the house. Um, you had the one phone number for everything. Um, you had the one, no, you didn't need any password. So all of this might be a bit confusing for the elderly sort of businesses. And you are trying to build your business online. So you could actually start charging, um, you know, other smaller, um, social, um, you know, businesses to help them with their social marketing. It's not going to be that difficult because social media is ex exploding. And right about now, there's a lot of, confusion you know about the algorithms and everything else and you being here right now tells me something about you knowing a thing or two about social media so you can help other people that literally don't maybe have a page or have a presence or some sort of uh, way like that and i know for sure i charge an upwards of 500 dollars to just help people be seen on social so they can like share and comment all right so it, there is a bit of money to be made there while you're hatching your 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 side um your your side gig or your real gig. Um Sunny does says I would love to get your help to grow my business. Send me a message so that I can shoot you through my um what do you call it? My calendar so that we can sit down and we can share ideas, see where you are. Maybe I could be the person that can help you or maybe I'm not. So let's see the synergies of how that could work out. So because businesses around the world, they now understand the importance of social media. You know, um, some small businesses, they just used to having people within their locale. But what if you've serviced everybody else within your industry? So these small businesses now need to expand into a global market. You can actually help them. But most of them, they don't know how to take advantage of this new phenomenon, all right? So you, as somebody who's already a startup or already head and shoulders above um, the rest, you can actually help some of your other people in your network with their social media and charge for it, you know? That's where you, you actually come in because you know a thing or two that they don't understand and you can actually make money, um, you know, to, to, to support your dream, to support your goals. I mean, of course, you don't need to understand all the ins and outs of social media um, in order to charge clients or to manage their social media accounts, you know what I mean? But some people don't actually have a clue as to what to post, what content to put out there. You already know a thing or two. That's why you're on this show today. And you already have a business that's on its way to be profitable and enjoyable. We're just talking about ways that you can increase, you know, the, the, the soft change so you can have a couple of drinks with the homies on the weekend like it's a Friday today, you know what I mean? And you want to know the best part about this? The best part is it doesn't take much effort for you to post for a couple of other different pages, um, you know, on social media. And I'm speaking this out of love and due respect. I'm not taking your job, you scarcity filled social media manager. I'm not taking your job. Anyone can do what you're doing. But I'm just really helping out those that want a business that's profitable and enjoyable so that they can actually, you know, the people you're working around with already, they are interested customers and they already know who you are. You, all you can do is you're actually helping them because half of the time people don't appreciate when people, uh, I mean, when they don't pay for anything. So you're actually helping them by actually helping them. But, you know, for your time, you put a fee to it. Do you know what I mean? So there's, there's a lot of customers out there that are looking to purchase um, whatever their product is, but there's no information that they're putting out there online. So you can help them and you can get charge you can charge for that and that's where you actually do come in you know and um you can easily supplement your income almost immediately by doing this type of work for your clients and uh luke says i've been working with a cafe that has just opened and i did their logo for them um they have been open for two weeks and now still no social media i've told them i can do this for them but they just sorry i can't see the rest of it but 
you, you see what I'm talking about? Because your job entails you to be helping people with their branding. So part of branding also, you know, bleeds into like social media, etc. So, you know, it could be one of those things that you could, um, you know, have or be and do and help them to, 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 to run their business while you're also supplementing for your own income so that you can actually grow your own business. Because like I mentioned earlier on, guys, cash, cash, cash is king. All right. Cash is king. The ability to generate positive cash flow year in, month in, week in, week out. Do you know what I mean? It's really, really essential for a business to be viable long term. All right. Some people are uh, grand opening and grand closing their businesses because they don't have constant cash flow and they're just holding on to the idea that they started with, you know, but you could also do other things. All right, because of the mindset that we always have had that, oh, oh my God, I'm an entrepreneur. I can't be seen doing that. All right, so you really want to change and shift that mindset and start doing things that would actually help you by actually helping you because the more you don't have surplus cash flow, it won't lubricate you. You, you will fail in growing your business. Do you know what I mean? It's impossible to grow your business and, and, and then be profitable if you don't have constant inflow of cash coming in, because you're going to need the cash for softwares, you're going to need the cash to be presentable, you're going to need the cash for whatever it is that you pay for your monthly expenses for your business. And sometimes that's the reason why people skimp on doing their best work just because they can't afford to pay for it. Now, can you imagine if you're driving for Uber, like what we've mentioned, you're helping people with your social media. Um, what else have we mentioned? You, you're doing all these things. You're creating a sales funnel, getting more money from the clients you already have. Would you not be supplementing on your cash flow? Now, if you're enjoying this video, can you just type in the number one while I get a drink of water? I mean, obviously, we, we've all, almost gone for two, uh, 47 minutes. Um, Luke Corin says, how do you build agency for them and the importance um of this as they don't ever have a personal facebook or instagram um yeah you see half the time building agency is is is, is, is all good my man but if they don't see the value of it if they don't see the need for social media you really need to showcase them on what it is that they actually are missing out on right now the the best example i can give you is what do they stand to be making within their business if they employ social media, um, you know, to increase um, their reach or to increase their clientele? I'll give you this example so that you can use it. Look, um, let's say you go out and buy a TV. How much would it would be a 54 inch television cost a flat screen? Can you just type it in the comments there while I'm formulating this? Can you just type it in the comments? How much would it cost to buy a 54 inch television, just a rough figure. Just type it in there so that I see you engaged as well. Wealth has to be like water must flow in and out of your life. Absolutely, Charlie. That's what we're talking about. So some of the things that you can do, um, you know, increasing that cash flow would also, you know, motivate you to do more and be more. Now, they don't have a personal platform so that. So they just don't understand, which is really frustrating. Absolutely. All right. So you say 1,000. Okay. So let's say, look, okay. You say 2,000 fun. Well, okay. Let's just play around with 2,000. Let's say you, you stand to make within yourself and within your business $200,000 every single year, but you don't because you spend your time watching TV. How much is that TV now costing you? Is it still costing you $2,000 or is it now costing you $200,000? Hmm? Is it now costing you... Is it costing you $2,000 or is it now costing you $200,000? Because if you are spending money watching that TV that you purchased for $2,000, but if you could be working and putting stuff together and earning $200,000, how much is that TV costing you now? Please let me know in the comments while we go. Just put out a figure that so that I understand that you understand this concept that I'm talking about. How much would it be costing you if you stand a chance to be earning $200,000, but you're watching something that costed you $2,000? So, yes, more than $2,000. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. 
So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say, Luke, is show them how much they could be making instead of where they are right now. Because people don't understand, you know, if you can articulate their problem better than they can themselves, then they would assume that you've got the solution for them. All right. So you want to go to them, Mr. Cafe person. Do you know you are missing out on 10 extra cups of coffee every single day? Why? Because people don't know you exist on Instagram. So if a cup of coffee is three dollars, if a, yes, that's the that's the fee right there, Charlie. So if a cup of coffee is three dollars and if you're missing out on 10, that means that 30 extra dollars that they could be making. Um, you know, um, a day, which means they're missing out on $210 a week, which means they're missing out on over $840 a month, which is extra if they just wanted to do something uh, towards their Instagram. So show them how much they're missing out on by not being on the platform. Some people would understand when they can actually see the bleeding neck. Some people won't understand. All right. So there is cert certain ways that you can do to actually start, um, you know, creating some sort of stable cash flow coming through to your business. Um, some of us have got big apartments that we may have purchased or houses or our parents' houses that are empty. You can rent it out as a vacational rental or you can put it out on Airbnb, you know, you know, fixed. What, what do they call it? Short term rentals, you know, clearly. Clearly, you can opt into renting your home through, um, you know, Airbnb as well. That's an extra income that you don't have to go away from your work, but also just increase whatever you're doing. All right. There's also people like uh, Luke Corin. You can also look for um, some places like Fiverr or Elance or, um, you know, what do you call it? All those other platforms where um, people like yourself People like yourself have the expertise, you know, and you can join what is called the gig economy. All right. While you're waiting for your real jobs to come, you can be doing all the other minuscule jobs on like Air Tasca or like, um, you know, Fiverr. And it's called the gig economy. All right. Um, you know, no matter what service that you're going to be providing, you choose your hours, you choose your time. It is likely going to be available on, on Fiverr. So figure out how can you join those platforms so that you can increase your own, um, you know, cash flow that will then sustain and help you out with your, with your overall business. Do you know what I mean? You are simply going to be earning extra money um, that will increase your income so that you're more stable and you're available to create for and relate to your actual audience that actually works for you. And there's also people that play a lot of video games. Why don't you create... Um, you know, a platform on, what is it called? Twitch, twitch.tv. Um, can you let me know if, if I'm saying the right uh, website here? You know, it's a great way to actually make a bit of money where you can play video games and people get to watch you and you can screen, I think you can stream that gameplay and pr provide a voiceover service and get people to actually subscribe to your channel. I did not know that people can actually be played to sit in their underwear and play Mortal Kombat, you know? So, <laughs> does that still exist? <laughs> you can tell how old I am when it comes to games. So you can then utilize that. Um, you know, you can then utilize that with video ads. There's videos that come through there. There's also donations. There's also sponsorships. And people can actually use you as an influencer. And also, you can also try and become an influencer within your industry. You know, so there's a lot of ways that you can actually create some sort of extra income to come through so that you can actually support your business and it can actually, um, you know, become profitable with your with your main thing. Because the main reason you would understand that a lot of people are, are running short, um, you know, of, of, of things to do um, or how to make money or to increase their cash flow or their earnings is because they don't have money to bootstrap. And it's not it's not easy. I don't want to lie to you. If you don't know people like I was when I came to Australia, if you if you don't know people that can lift you up or put you on, it's not going to be um, it's not going to be an easy gig. And people need to know who you are. You need to create that brand. Crafting that brand takes a lot of time, money and effort. And the money part is where a lot of people really, really, really fall short. And the more you fall short um, when it comes to money, it, it just becomes very, very difficult. You know, it becomes very difficult. And I want 
Yeah, I, I really want that you you win at this game. I really want that you 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 have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I wanna I wanna see you guys. I wanna hang out with you guys. It's fun, you know, seeing high fiving each other, knowing that you've um you know you're doing well and everything else is working perfectly for you, you know. So don't just be too proud and 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 not go out there and really search for ways because if you're living in a first world like australia you know they're not going to accept hugs or likes in terms of you paying for your electricity bills you know and the more you have that at the back of your mind the more you're not going to produce any meaningful work because this is not going to be an easy road and nobody's going to just give it or hand it to you just because you showed up do you know what I mean? So if you can have to do whatever you have to do in order to maintain that side hustle, um, you know, so that you 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 are doing the right things by yourself, by your bills, so that we are not going to hear of you having all the things that you have bought on credit card being repossessed. It's not going to be a fun endeavor. And then you will then put that statement in your head that entrepreneurship is hard. But you can also do other things on the sidelines. You know? Um, at the end of the day, it's about taking action. It's about really figuring out what is it that I really want. And half of the time, guess what you need to really, really do? What you really need to do is have long-term goals that whatever you can do in between, nothing will shake where you really want to head off. Just like any GPS that you're going to be using to drive to go anywhere else, you put the end goal in, in sight, all right? You put the end the destination in sight, and then the GPS navigates whichever way. You can take a wrong turn. The lady will constantly tell you, please turn right, please turn right. If you've got that anchor, just make sure you, you know where you're headed to. This show might have been counterintuitive to a lot of people, but I want you to be open to knowing that if you don't have cash flow going through the veins of your business, then it was nice meeting you. Now, Luke says, smash the side hustle and send, and send very little. Uh, make massive sacrifices if you want to succeed. Absolutely. All right. And whatever money you make, this is from me to you. Something I learned from my mom. Save 10% of it. My mom used to make me put that 10% to church, but you want to save that 10% for yourself. And that's going to be your rainy day fund no matter what. Even if you earn $6 from a $5 gig, save 10% of that. No matter what you're going to do, 10% of your income should be yours first. And that's what Robert Kiyosaki then explains and says, pay yourself first. All right? Because half of this time, what we do, um, Charlie says at the end of the day, you need the balls to move forward. Simple. <laughs> Absolutely. And I see Glenn Thornton has just tuned in, my man. I'm about to knock off. It's been an hour that I was talking, talking, talking. <laughs> I hope you're having a fantastic day right there. And if you guys, this was supposed to be a question and answer segment, but it seems I probably did not give you an opportunity to ask those questions. So let's continue this conversation right at the bottom. I really want that if you're running an online business, um, you know, for yourself, it is actually profitable and enjoyable. And I want that if you really want to learn the simple four step system, just type in the word blueprint. I'll send it through to you. Um, you know, it's, it's designed for you so that you too can grow um, and, and, and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable because all that you can do is all that you can do. So figure out what do you need to do? Who do you need um, you know, dogs hump their owners in order to get a treat. So who do you need? Whose leg do you need to hump in order for you to get that little, um, you know, cash flow, etc., etc. And don't mind what the next person is going to say. Oh, I'm going to be seen working at Woolworths or I'm going to be seen working at, um, at Uber or whatever it is. Are they paying your bills? Are they paying your bills? If they are, then maybe. But if they're not, do what you got to do. Do you know what I mean? So if you make it up to the end of this video, please share this. You know, we're just spreading the word. It's not a matter of, um, you know, it's not a matter of uh, popularity for me. It's just we need to help as many people so that they get a clear understanding of exactly who they've got to become in order to be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. All of those, um, you know, quick 
quick money schemes that are peddled on Facebook. Yeah, that's as long as they work quickly and you're going to have to continuously do them, um, you know, over and over and over and over and over again. I'm obviously here to help. I'm here to serve. And if I can be of help to you, let a brother know. This is the end of the week, um, 23rd of 02. I'm signing off. And I'm hoping that you are actually going to go in and start really taking a hard look at your financial statements. Are you saving that 10%? Are you actually spending below your means? Are you actually bringing in, um, you know, you know, the money that is actually going to sustain you? Because positivity is cool. We can all chant, um, you know, um, aff affirmations and, you know, believe in the law of attraction, but... When the rubber hits the road, you're going to have to make sure your business is being profitable and enjoyable. My mission really is to help entrepreneurs such as yourself to set up a reliable and lucrative business that is profitable and you actually enjoy working in it. And if you're missing out on cash flow, you won't be enjoying working in it. So, you know, basically we utilize effective digital marketing strategies and I also help people that are starting out or even the well-seasoned entrepreneur to repair and set up their businesses and their systems and their processes so that it works best for whatever industry that they're doing um, they're working and I do this daily all right so if this is your first time watching the lunch and um, the ask and prosper show I do this every single Friday 2 p.m. AEST for one hour and I have a regular show Monday to Friday I'm at Monday to Thursday at 2 p.m. where I'm actually talking about how you can actually start, scale, and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Um, Charlie says, last year I made over 800000 Good on you, man. And two, two more businesses this year, open this year, and I'm about to start driving Uber. Love meeting new people. Absolutely, man. That's Those are really good figures. And at the end of the day, just go and do what actually... What actually, you know, sets your soul on fire? Because at the end of the day, some people can't tell you who you're supposed to be at the end of the day. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. And bye for now.